Welcome to the Garma Aftar show. In today's episode I have with me Muskan Sethi who is one of India's top poker pioneers and recipient of first ladies president's award. She is the team pro and gaming ambassador for Poker Bazi. She is also the co-founder of Doggy Do which is a social networking app for pet parents in India. Thanks for joining me Muskan such a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you so much, Karma. I mean, uh, we've we've discussed about having each other on each other's podcasts, but uh, this, this is finally happening, and I'm a big fan of yours as well. I've been following your journey, and uh, thank you so much. It's it means a lot for me to me. Uh, it means a lot to me that you know you uh, thought of me and are adding me to the list of athletes that you think are deserving to be on your show. Absolutely you are very deserving i mean you know there's a general myth about poker that you know uh, i think there's a little stereotype that's attached to poker that it's a it's a game of entertainment and you know since it's related to cards and also how have you broken that myth because you also play competitive poker so can you please uh, you know tell us about your journey so karima my journey has been uh, full, filled with thrill because it was because of the fact that india never accepted uh, poker as a mind sport whereas me and a few poker players who believed in the sport uh, and especially the poker industry knew this fact uh, but then uh, the 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 only way that poker has ever been introduced to the uh, masses has been through movies so what you see in the movies you kind of relate that to real life and which is not true in poker yes it is the most entertaining uh, mind sport out there it's so complex i mean i am someone who uh, plays a lot of games and for me i enjoy poker the most and i'm not saying it because i'm a professional poker player there's no reason for me to take sides of uh, one of the games uh, but this has been a life changing one uh, definitely the stigma in india is uh, not justified and uh, i feel like the upcoming generation is going to break this myth they are going to uh, uh, break these st- stereotypes even further than what i have done uh, where i am concerned i uh, started with no guidance actually because i thought that i to be india's first female professional poker player you when you are the first you have to carve your own uh, path you have to you know pick your own destiny and uh, create everything for yourself so that is exactly what happened with me where i just followed my heart i just followed uh, my passion which was you know it was just how in every sport there is something prestigious to look up to so if poker had a few tournaments which are prestigious and i told myself that i can go and win one of these tournaments one day so you know that was a changing point where a hobby became a profession um and obviously the president's award <laughs> of course that's wonderful so did you get you get you got the president's award basically for the poker game that uh, you've been representing our country have you played internationally and uh, so is is the award yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can you imagine? For me, like we are discussing about poker being a stigma, but the president of India uh, did not, uh, you know, uh, he deferred. He uh, said that you know this. He accepts it's a mind sport. I had a word with him where he congratulated me, and I was inducted as India's first female uh, professional poker player. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, because there was a committee that sits down for. these awards it's it's not something like a nomination or something uh okay. it is it's actually something which is a part of history that you know okay. these women were first to do something and yeah so it was such okay. an experience and um, when you get there and then of, of course poker was such a new uh, unheard of and a new thing but the other stories and the other women who were there and uh, other journeys that i got to witness was um, you know it that was something that was that could be a turning point in my life where you know you feel that you know you have done it all or you can do it all but then when you see others and their journey and you see the struggles that can come in anybody's life you your struggles seem very small then absolutely you know? I, i totally agree totally agree so i mean as you say, you said uh, poker is a mind sport 
and uh, you've been playing uh, competitive poker so uh, how did you from hobby how did it turn into uh, you know like a uh, like a sport like a competitive uh, arena how did you get into that and how did you come to know um, that so uh, you can play a tournament and all the stuff so i used to play just um, on you know recreational sites where you basically all recreational players come there and they play and it's all real players but you're playing online so i had started playing that and since i was a child i was always inclined towards strategic games so i was someone who was you know playing cards at a very young age uh, which was you know also a big uh, factor uh, in my growing up that you know why why playing cards everyone is studying and you you know you are uh, more interested in that and i would be like you know make excuses that i'm i'm studying probability i'm studying this but to be honest a uh, risk also excites you uh, that is also something because when you um, consider things like return of investment and when you are think uh, when you're studying things like resource management poker plays a big big role in that uh so that's how poker was a part of my life in the sense it was just a a game that i liked uh later uh, my husband who was that time my boyfriend uh he also shares that passion with me where he loved poker but him and his friends uh had picked it up from abroad so i was you know so when they explained it to me what happens abroad like the respect of poker uh that is there in other countries that is something that was an eye opener for you know it could be an eye opener for any poker player who plays in india that you know you you here are uh, explaining your journey explaining and uh kind of um, giving explanations for why you chose a unconventional path whereas in uh, many countries it's really something to be celebrated and uh, something that they you know give you like in your cv it's it's something you can be proud of. proud of and you can proudly write i am a poker player uh and i won so and so competition so it really uh leaves a very good impression if you're especially in the finance uh sector fabulous and uh, as you said you know definitely it's a, it's an unconventional sport and to be able to you know do so well in it and you know to be able to uh, go ahead and you know kind of follow your dreams uh, against all odds and all i think you require a lot of courage and i really applaud you for that uh, uh, muskan that's Thank really you. incredible so please tell me i mean as you said it's a mind sport so uh, you know what kind of skills are required to play poker um in the tournaments uh you need to be adaptive so being able to adapt is a very very big skill in poker uh having a strategic acumen is should be your second nature so understanding strategies and um, so in poker there could be to simplify it could be that you know there are some people are following a very uh, a gto strategy which means a game theory optimum and then there are some players who are playing the exploitative strategy and then there are some players that would balance the two so you know in in poker i i, I would say that you know these skills uh, understanding how every uh, everything works and then finding your own mix of things to um, you know battle the players out there on the felt understanding your game selection understanding your forte understanding that um, you know which um, uh, tournaments are going to get you highest returns is very important it's a skill that comes with bankroll management it's a skill that a lot of investment bankers use when they put our money into different a uh, places it's something that they try to understand uh, that okay where would you know this resource get me the maximum return so those skills are required in poker psychology is required in poker uh, you need to be you need to not just have a, a certain level of iq but a, a certain level of eq where you are able to understand uh, people's emotions and uh, you are able to understand if you know they are making uh, their decisions um uh, you know make uh, out of uh, based on you know what factors that is something you can really um, uh, you know understand well um and so yeah so you know the the best thing about poker is 
it's not that I was I was some prodigy or I was someone that I was born with all these skills and I um, you know was just meant to be. Um, definitely, poker did choose me. It is one of those sports that came into my life at such a um, in such a fashion. My journey has been. I mean, those from the poker industry know my journey. It's been, you know, how they say, like it's a balance of luck and skill. So it's you know how far your luck can take you, and then it's the skill that's gonna <laughs> keep you there. So it's you know I got there by luck, but okay. then now uh, then I took help of the skill to kind of you know um, stay around and uh, make um, make my journey count. And um, so I was telling you, Garima, that definitely uh, you will as time will progress. You will keep adding a lot of skills to your arsenal. You're gonna get better and better, and it is something that you will understand because that's that's what the game demands from you. If you uh, you know get better when you get better, so when it demands discipline and all of these things, then you end up giving it in and you end up learning those things. So, yeah, at poker. Um, there are a lot of skills that you need, but there are a lot of skills that you will learn uh, when you uh, you know involve. A poker in your life no absolutely and um, uh, i'm sure i mean you know there are so many learnings for you uh, during your journey and you know you have developed developed a lot of skills because uh, i mean that's an ongoing process actually so any incident uh, that has happened in your life uh, muskan which has you know, kind of change the way of your thinking, you know, maybe any challenge or any any kind of a success or any failure, uh, uh, you know, during your um, journey? Um, Karma, of course, um, it's it's a balance of both. Uh, there, there are so many things to be proud of, but then also so many failures, so many setbacks that come and but they come with learnings. They come with uh, teachings and stuff. So, um, but then, I divide things into two parts, which is things that are in my control and things that are not in my control. So things that have been in my control have only been, you know, very minor things. I've controlled them. I've learned from them. But the things that I could not control were losing my parents. Uh, that loss was something that I, uh, even the mind could not fathom. And I was, you know, uh, not able to understand. No mindset coach can help you out of that. But my mind did. Uh, I did reach out to the world's best mindset coach out there whose name is Elliot Rowe. So people would go to a counselor, people would go to therapists, but I went to a mindset coach because I wanted to understand how to uh, separate uh, my uh, actions from emotions. So that is something that I worked on and it really changed my way of thinking where I um, I am a very emotional person. I am filled with emotions. And on the other hand, on the poker table, you cannot have emotions. So for me, it's, 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 you can, you, you can imagine the thrill, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but I, you know, you can't help, but you can only conceal. So, you know, and, and a good poker player and is someone who's your able to conceal. To, to conceal, you know, and you're full of emotions and to be able to, yeah. you cannot reveal yeah. your emotions. But, on the table, yeah. Yeah, but you know, the best part is, Garma, I swear, I mean, it's uh, something that you're going to understand if you are a poker player or someone when you start playing, that um, you become numb and you become, you know, when you, it's like, people say, how do you practice your poker face? You just become that person. You become so confident. You have been in that situation so many times. Right. The experience Absolutely. that you are able to hold your own and you don't have any emotions while playing poker because those are the things that you are controlling. Absolutely. And you know, so... That's the training. Um, There's a training but yes. that helps actually, obviously, since you are practicing and training and obviously, so that's... That's the skill development that you're doing, that you get that poker face and nobody's able yeah. to understand you know, what's going inside your you know, yeah. feelings. So how does and it for work? other athletes? Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. So so for other athletes, it's uh, I feel like it's pretty uh, organized. They know when they have to perform. They know what tournaments they have to go for. And, you know, a lot of those things. And it's um, pretty much like... It, 
you know, there is this one gala event and then you know how the year was. So with poker, it's very different. You're going to be playing so many tournaments oh. around the world, around the year. And you're going to be winning, losing, losing mostly. So it's just you have to learn how to, you know, keep getting hit, keep getting up, keep getting up. So that is also very important. Wow. As you said, okay, you you definitely, uh, I mean, I'm sure you have had so many, you know, setbacks and successes and all. So uh, during your journey, what's any, any advice which has really helped you from your coach or from many of your, uh, you know, elders or any friends or family who has given, had said something to you, which has really stayed with you and you have, uh, you kind of remember it and you kind of apply it uh in your life um it's it's actually something that my uh, parents taught me you know it's just uh, that they 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 told me that in life you can do whatever you want but don't give up on your dreams it is the only thing that you're going to regret um you know and and it's my mom uh, was also very uh, she used to she was very active she used to do um, you know so many th things but my dad uh, had joined family business whereas he wanted to pursue pharmacy so he was very passionate about pharmacy and uh, he was a pharmacist but then he could not you know go for his further scholarships and studies because he had to join his father's business because he lost his dad at a very young age and um and then he told me that the the next few years that, you know, he was in business were very blank, you know, they were very bland and they were always, uh, he said that he was always thinking about, you know, uh, chemistry <laughs> at work. <laughs> so even though he was in, at, uh, he was doing automobiles, but he said he was thinking about chemistry and he, and he, he, he said that, you know, when you do something you love, life is really beautiful. And wow. my mom, she told me that, you know, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Like that is, awesome. don't let anyone else tell you because they do not know who you are, what you are. And it's uh, every every human being is very unique and they have that power within them to surprise the world and do something and everything that you we get impressed around us is actually all man made it's human made so it's it's always you know been someone out there who was the first to do something so that's the reason and these are the two teachings that i would would like to share with the younger generation so that you know in case there's something that is stopping them just go for it Super, super. Thank you so much. I think that's a very, very powerful advice, you know, uh, not to, to have complete faith in yourself and not let anybody else tell you that, you know, you can't do it or, you know, the, yeah, you, I think to have <laughs> full, full uh, that, you know, kind of faith in oneself. Super, great. Um, so let's come to the rapid fire questions now. Are you ready for that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Your role model? Uh, my mom. Okay. My mother. The best thing about you, about both? <laughs> Bluffing. Bluffing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So you must have become a pro at it with a poker face. <laughs> yeah, that was a. Have you played that card game, Bluff? That was the first yeah, card yeah. game I learned in my life. Yeah, we played bluff, uh, bluffing, uh, you know, in our uh, in, in in our childhood. But definitely, we also play now, also actually, not just childhood. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's an awesome game. But that's the best thing about poker, bluffing. <laughs> that's cool. bluffing, and yeah. And the first thing I learned about uh, cards, and uh, apparently, it was invented by soldiers. So hats off to those soldiers who invented it because it had led to poker. <laughs> Okay, really? How? I mean, uh, please tell me the story. What is it? So bluff was uh, bluff was actually invented by a few soldiers uh, during a war when you know they needed just time pass, so they invented a nice strategy card game. Uh, okay. So that's where the game bluff comes from. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, going ahead with our questions. Okay, what's your uh, hidden talent? Uh, my hidden talent is that I have a very high EQ. Okay. Uh, best poker memory? 
best book of memory uh, was when I went to Vegas for the first time and played poker tournaments there. It was the best, best, best feeling ever to, you know, from a poster in your room to being in front of your eyes. Documentary film that inspired you the most? Oh, this is a tough one. But I remember watching a movie when I was younger, uh, which was A Beautiful Mind. Um, it, and it's by, it's John Nash's story. So yes. I think that was, that was a very interesting movie. Yeah, yeah, that is, yeah. that is a great one. Okay, proudest accomplishment so far? The President's Award, I think I'm super proud about that and, and it's something that I hold very close to my heart. The favorite tournament that you've participated in, one of the most challenging or the most memorable tournament? The World Series of Poker that happens in Las Vegas. That is, um, you know, one of the most uh, challenging, prestigious tournaments. That That is a tournament where your emotions run really high. Super, super. Okay, and, and with this, we come to the end of the show. Thank you, Muskan, for joining me in this absolutely wonderful session. Thank you so much, Karima, for having me. You're a lovely person and you're always inspiring me. Uh, and this smile of yours, this is, uh, you know, a very, it's a motivational <laughs> statement for many. Yeah, so keep good. going and love you. Thank you so much, my dear. Thank you so much. And thank you all for listening to today's episode with your host, Garima Aftar. If you like this episode, then subscribe to my podcast for more new episodes and a deeper dive into the world of motivation and winning psychology. See you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.